hey, Audra, should I move out of my house to sell it for top dollar and for a quicker amount of market time? Now, if you talk to any realtor, they're gonna tell you, yes, yes, that's a good idea, but I'm gonna tell you differently. I'm gonna talk about some things that you should consider before doing that. Now, the reason why most realtors are gonna tell you to move out of the house is because it's always in perfect showing condition. It smells good. We don't have kid toys and dog toys and smells circulating throughout the house. So from a realtor's perspective, it's much easier for us to do our job when the house is in perfect condition. When you're living in the property, I don't care if you think your house smells good. Every single time I walk into any property, there's always a certain smell that the house has and it's the people smell and it's not bad, it's not great, it's just a certain smell. So when you get the dogs and the kids and the family and the foods and the sport gear, all that stuff off the property, it's amazing how the smell in the house is neutral, okay? so. And then not even that on a moment's notice, let's say we have a really interested buyer that wants to see your house. We don't have to call you and make sure everything's ready to go. We can just immediately bring them to the house, turn the lights on, set it up for a showing and get more people in in a very a more efficient and a shorter time frame, potentially fetching you a, an offer at a quicker rate than if you were living there. If you're living on the property and we have a showing, we have to contact the owner, make sure the kid's schedule is all lined up. We have to make sure dad or mom, whoever's working at the house isn't on a Zoom call. So we're not able to get the buyers in as conveniently. And then once we finally get the buyers in, like I said, oftentimes things aren't picked up, you know, life gets in the way. I mean, we've all had days where the house isn't perfect, but when you go to sell your house, like literally every time, and I mean this people, every time a buyer comes into that property, it has to, to look perfect. It has to smell perfect. Every little detail needs to be on point. And if you're living in that property, it's very difficult to do so. When the market was really hot, right? Last two years, we would put an open house up, we'd put a for sale sign up, we'd put the property in MLS, and we'd get 20 calls the very first day. And we'd have people lining out the front door, and I'm not even exaggerating, to get them into the property and multiple offers were the norm, okay? Rates were down around 3%. Love that, the super fun. And so during that market, I did recommend my sellers to go find somewhere else to live because it was just a matter of time before we got their house in escrow. We wanted to show the house on a moment's notice and get as many people as we could into the property to fetch the higher price. But the market was really hot. We had a lot of interesting interested buyers. So I did recommend during that era for people to move out, not even that, it was during COVID. So there was some safety reasons for recommending that. But we are in a much different market right now, much, much different. So today it's much different. We have maybe two showings a week, I'm trying to do at least one open house every other weekend. There's not a ton of people coming into my open houses. The mortgage rates have definitely, we'll just say muted buyer demand. And furthermore, we're coming to the end of the year and it's always a slower time in the market. The market's definitely downshifting. So to move out of your property expecting that the house is gonna look perfect and you're gonna fetch top dollar, that was top dollar, and you're gonna have all this interest, understand we are in a much different market. So I'm not recommending that to my clients right now. Now I do have some clients that are like, Audra, I have pit bulls and snakes, I, I'm, I have kids and there's no way I can keep the house clean. We're gonna temporarily move somewhere because we just know we can't commit to keeping the house clean for three days a week. We just can't do it. So we're gonna make this investment in our house to you know, locate offsite, but understand that if you're only having three showings a week, at least in my area, which is Orange County, California, it may not be financially advantageous for you to spend extra costs to rent something in the short term. Now the downsides of moving off the property, especially if I'm not showing the property or your realtor is not showing the property, is that when a house isn't used, like crazy things happen. <laughs> So in all of my vacant properties, I usually go around at the end of the day and I always make the water run for about five minutes because you know pressure can build up in the plumbing systems. And the next thing you know, you got slab leaks, you got sink leaks, something blows, okay? And if no one's watching that property because it's vacant, guess what? <laughs> Some of these things can be, you know, we'll just say overlooked. And by the time you or your realtor notices the issue, it's a real problem. So if you are moving off the property, we know the markets are, you know, a little bit slower, Make sure a friend, a neighbor, or your realtor is checking on the property regularly. The other challenge about not living on the property is that the house, it gets dirty, right? So when you're living on a property, you're cleaning countertops, 
when we're doing open houses and we're having buyers into it, it gets it gets a little dingy. We spiders start growing, you know, on the the side of the walls, the leaves start coming in. So during this period of time, whether you're living in the property or whether you're located or vacant or on a big vacation, make sure you have those cleaning services and the gardening services, you know, consistently, at least every other weekend, coming to the property to make sure it's in tip top shape. So I don't care if you're living in your property or if the property is vacant, I'm always gonna recommend staging. <laughs> I'm a staging girl. I did a few videos, I'll link it down below. I have owned my own staging business and my own design business, and I do know it makes a difference. Staging is expensive. You can do your own staging with some helpful tips. I always comp staging for my properties because I will put my own energy, time, and money behind the staging process because I believe in it so much. Now, if you are owner-occupied, um, the stager will come out, they'll do a consult, they'll work with what you have. Oftentimes the rates are a little bit higher if you are living in a property because you do put more wear and tear on the property. If you're non-owner occupied and the property is vacant, you know, stagers love that because they come in, they know the, the, the furniture is not going to be dinged. So if you are owner occupied, oftentimes you might be spending a little bit more for the staging. A lot of stagers won't do owner occupied, especially if there's animals or bad habits like smoke smoking and you know, whatever, all that stuff. And if it is vacant, then obviously you, you get a benefit or sometimes a discount because the furniture isn't being, we'll just say overused and damaged. You can also do a hybrid model, right? So on the weekends, maybe you work with your agent and you say, hey, listen, on these two weekends of the month, we're gonna be vacating and vacationing somewhere. So maybe you do a quick vacation, a couple weekends out of the month, and then allowing your agent to show the property during that period of time. Having access to the property and showing it in its perfect light is really going to help fetch that price and also get your house into escrow at a much shorter period of time. One other tip that I would give is if you're living on the property, I would highly recommend that you declutter and get those boxes, move them into a public storage. Sometimes it's two, three hundred dollars. I know that's money and I know money's tight right now for a lot of people. But if you are living there, the less clutter, the less personal items that are on the property, especially in that garage, it seems like everybody's garage is maxed out. Let's try to move that off the property. So I would spend money in decluttering and staging before I would spend the money in locating offsite. So is it vital for you to move off the property to fetch a top dollar for the quickest amount of time? I mean, I'm gonna tell you it's not gonna hurt. I would just do the cost benefit analysis. There's a tremendous amount of inconvenience that goes into doing that. If you're a family with a lot of kids and pets and dogs, it might make sense for you to do that. But I'm telling you right now, the one thing that's gonna help you get your house sold for top dollar in the quickest amount of time is decluttering, staging, and making sure that you show your house in the best light. And once again, I will link a few videos that I've done in the past for that. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Hope you got some value and please subscribe to my channel if you got any benefit. I'll see you in the next video.